Welcome to the Qumran Report. May the peace and blessings of the life-giving creative spirit be upon you and upon your family. My name is Melvin Ishmael Johnson, your host. And this is a Q&A session from uh, February 2022. From Catch the Tiger. And we're fortunate to have some of the cast members and also the granddaughter of Marcus Garvey, Indinga Garvey. First, first and foremost, I want to just greet uh, my, my friends, the cast members, the, the actors who just killed the Zoom um, production. I mean, Melvin, what, what you guys did was beautiful. The backdrops, the the transitions. Uh, I've, I've done a couple of these uh, table reads and this has probably been the highest quality and smoothest, best actor. So um, congrats, really good job, um, everyone. And, and it's such, such a delight to see Alexander, Raquel, Charlotte, Jonathan, uh, hey guys, I, I haven't seen you guys in feels like years, but um, I'm, I'm so delighted that all you guys are looking good and still, still, um, still in this. So um, yeah, as far as uh, what I think of Marcus Garvey, I mean, I I, I love the man. He's like uh, one of my heroes. I remember learning about him. Um, when I when I was doing um, my own cleansing of the history that America and French taught me, and uh, I, I was blown away that he was able to pull all of that together in the 1920s. And when you think in re retrospect, it's been a hundred years that Marcus Garvey, you know, started this this big movement, and I mean, we're we're, we're still fighting that same um, exact fight. And uh, the United States or the enemy or the, the enemy of black progress has used the same tactics all around the world to um, take down our leaders. And it's always, um, you know, that divide and conquer. They, they always find someone uh, that could get close to, to take down our leaders. So, um, with that being said, uh, I, I love Marcus Garvey. I, I love uh, I love this play. I love this message. I think it's it's still timely today. And after watching st movies like American Skin and uh, Judas the Black Messiah coming out, I think a movie about Marcus Garvey should be next. So, um, in doing my research. Um, Amy, she kind of, uh, she kind of played the background, but she was a very integral part um, in the movement. She did a lot of research um, for his speeches. He, she wrote a lot of the speeches. She um, actually did a lot of the speeches, and, and I read that she was actually well received. Sometimes um, more like better received than Marcus Garvey. You know, people actually became a fan of hers because she was a prolific speaker. Um, you know, she she came from you know a middle class background. She had the the um, the opportunity. Well, she she graduated from high school, which is that was a big deal in the you know the twenties for you know young Jamaican youths. And you know she was able to you know get an education and work for a law firm. So she you know she educated herself. She you know um, went to a conference. Uh, where Mar Marcus Garvey was speaking and she got completely inspired by it. And, you know, she went full speed ahead. And um, mm. based on the, the play, you know, I feel like, and this probably happened to her, she probably was struggling with, you know, feeling like people thought she was the doormat or she was the shadow or doormat for Marcus Garvey. Um, and she probably struggled with that a lot. And um, I know women, you know, sometimes we had, it was like you, you play your position, you play the background, you support, you support, you support. And a lot of times, you know, the woman was the background. She was the, the ghost writer, the, 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 the person he probably confided in, you know, and she had his back. And, um, you know, it's not a lot written about her, but what I did uh, read, you know, she sounded like a very strong woman, a very, 
smart, strong, supportive woman. So I think, you know, and the fact that she took over the UNIA after he, um, you know, got arrested and was deported. Okay. That's, yeah. Um, for Amy Ashwood Garvey, she, from what I was reading, she was a force of a woman. Um, she was right there with him and helped start the organization um, from the very beginning. She met him when she was very young. And so this was, uh, she was very much actively involved um, with activism from the very start, from her, from her youth. And then she met him along the way. And then they started this organization. And yeah, she met him when she was younger. And then she has all this other life that she lived after she, she divorced him. But what I saw from reading was she was very loyal to not just him, but to the movement um, she was a rock of the movement. She helped organize a lot. Um, she was a main organizer in New York City. She ran the offices in New York City. She brought in the, um, a women's section of the UNIA in New York City. And then she had a whole life after she left um, and moved to London. And she just kept going and going and going. And she was a, a very well-rounded woman as far as her, her uh, the entertainment and, and um, uh, forming many different organizations. But I think what's really surprised me most of all when reading it was reading how much, how important she was, but she's hardly ever mentioned. I think you mentioned, you were asking what's the importance of her for today's activism. And, and just to remember, like we always hear Marcus, if, if we're lucky, we hear about Marcus Garvey. I, I came across his name, but you know, I, I barely heard about her at all. Um, and I was an African American studies minor. I had a lot of classes and I, I kept hearing about him and his name is raised up, but you have to raise her up too because she was right there with him and uh, with her power and her force and her energy and her passion and everything. And she took a bullet for him. You know, she was gonna, she was willing to die for it. So I think that's, that's important to, to know. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, before we get into the Alabama, let me hear from uh, 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 Alexander who played Marcus Garvey. Let's get some of your thoughts on the Marcus Garvey. And then we uh, go to um, um, Bama who also uh, played Marcus Garvey in the production. Um, Bill White directed uh, both of these uh, particular uh, productions. We had some uh, great directors who helped develop the story. Bill White, um, Jamal McNeil, Sunji Ali, some of the people that I work with. Um, uh, Alexander, uh, give us some of your thoughts and then we move to Bama and get into the discussion. Good evening. Um, I think that Marcus, well, first of all, he was very influenced by the women in his life. Um, I think they were part of his inspiration for, for the decisions he made. He depended on them greatly. Um, I don't think that people realize how, how strong an influence those women were in his life. And I also think it's interesting how history kind of repeats. Garvey was extremely influential, extremely, and more so than, than the history books give him credit for. The man was creating a movement of taking a race of people out of a country and initially was branded a kook and people ignored it. But he actually had quite the following to the point where the country actually had to stop that because they were afraid of the entire infrastructure falling apart because if his movement continued, they would be in big trouble. This was not done out of hate or, or aggression. He was doing these things out of passion and believing that he wanted to do best for the people um, that he's, he's a part of. So I, 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 I see a lot, of, a lot of things that are repeating in history now. So I, Garvey was ahead of his time. His view might have been a little weird, a little sideways, but what he was doing came from a good place, I believe. Because uh, the writing was so good, and I, I'm honored to be a part of this project. Always great to work with Melvin, and Pam is awesome. I'm just honored, and I believe we have um, Mark Scarvey's um, daughter, on the line as well. So we're honored to have her. I'm just I'm glad to be part of it. Thank you for having me. And uh, uh, there's, a good, yeah, there's a really good question in the uh, in the q and I just saw. Do you think that perhaps now is the time for black people to, to consider to going uh, to go back to Africa? And for me, I uh, 
I don't know about going, I, I, you know, to live. I mean, how everything has played out, it seems like, yeah, we should be going back, right? We should be going back right now. But if we're not going back right now, um, I think we definitely need to utilize our collective power, right? And there are a lot of us here and there are a lot of us there. And there's got to be a way. I don't know what that way is, but I would love to explore like what it means for us to use our collective power for the good of all of our people right you know africa is a state of mind that's right that's right <laughs> yeah I don't, I don't. that's right so who said what's the name you said that um garvey's granddaughter Brenda. is in attendee who is it what's the name her name is in zinga in garvey yeah and she's got some great comments in yeah, chat. Absolutely. In, in, oh, I see it. So I'm going to Last promote name, her to panelist while I'm trying to work off screen. So if you don't mind me just having a handful of things to say, how absolutely wonderful. I want to first and foremost just thank the cast for outstanding, just outstanding performances. Um, again, the material is so close to me. And to be quite frank, I'm not always certain how my family's legacy is going to be interpreted. And so I just have to say, this is just an absolutely breathtaking and honorable rendition um, of a very small part of his impact and influence. Um, but thank you all so much. I'm, I'm elated and happy and so glad to be here. Very, very glad to be here. Well, you know, it's so fascinating because, um, again, I, I was, you know, prior to me being identified um, that I was here, um, I was very much the fly on the wall. And it's so interesting when people are talking about your family and you're literally present. And so I, I do um, just for whoever thought it was in the best interest of this particular round table to invite me in. Again, I want to say thank you because it's so hard just uh, typing away with two fingers, trying to um, have um, a bit of messaging. Um, so I actually live here in Los Angeles, in Santa Monica, um, California. And um, again, uh, my grandfather, Marcus, had two sons, um, Uncle Junior and my dad. And um, for those of you who have been following in terms of what's been transpiring with my family, um, our Uncle Junior um, has passed away. He did pass away uh, this year. And so my dad, Dr. Julius Garvey, is the last, um, you know, uh, remaining and surviving son of Marcus Garvey. And so it's just so timely uh, that this particular production came out because as it was referenced here, tomorrow um, is the opening day uh, for Judas and the Black Messiah. And so the correlation in terms of, again, this particular group taking a snapshot of this aspect of Garvey's life, and then we see this playing out with Fred Hampton tomorrow in terms of the film, um, I was very fortunate to have Macro um, give myself and my father um, advanced screening of the film. And um, as I told Charles, um, from the moment the opening credits opened till the moment that the um, closing credits ran, I was crying, but it was sobbing. And it was this sort of intergenerational racial trauma that all came to a head in watching it play out in Technicolor. And so if anyone hasn't seen the film yet um, or has the opportunity tomorrow to see it, please do because the work that you've done here tonight absolutely dovetails. And when you see how it is recreated um, in that release, um, there are so many similarities. I mean, literally the verbiage, there's some of the verbiage from tonight, just because again, I saw the movie and you're going to be astounded 
at the parallels and the close proximity of the tactics, as was pointed out from the 20s, that literally played right mm -hmm. back again into the 60s. And so, um, again, this this virtual reading is coming at a sure. most opportune time. And I'm just so grateful to be here and just thank you for um, putting so much love and passion um, into these performances. They mean the world to me. Um, I got to be close to my family tonight, so it felt really, really good. Um, being in Jamaica um, when my father uh, took us to St. Anne's um, to see where um, his father, my grandfather, came from. And so, you know, you start to get a sense based on the work that he did, um, the printing work and the ability to start to lay out a newspaper. So this notion of how is it that Garvey had this widespread impact, it was really under understanding media and at the time the major media platform being the newspaper we have to fast forward and look now at the other media platforms that are there to help to amplify the message and so um, it should come as no surprise that um, my grandfather was an apprentice when it came to printing and that he should have had mastery over how to use the written word and the spoken word in terms of being able to transform a moment. And I do like that it's qualified as this ability for a man to take a moment and to transform it into a movement. And it was done so well um, from my grandfather's standpoint and really um, homage to my grandmother. It was interesting that one of the questions came up about the influence of the two Amy's. And the other day my dad and I were talking and we always talk about different storylines in terms of how do we see um, Marcus's um, story being told. And I'm like, daddy, I always wanted to tell the story from the perspective of my grandmother. I'm like, if we're trying to capture a sense of relatability, it's, you know, what happens when the man is removed from a prominent position within the movement and how does that woman as that partner as that um you know uh, helpmate step in to really carry on that torch and i just think it's the story of amy and maybe i'm biased and i am told that i look like her from my dad um but it's the story of amy that i've always felt was the fresh new untold story of marcus garvey not to take away from obviously my granddad um but if i was to ever see a movie about marcus Garvey, I, I think as tonight's production showed uh, the role of the two Amy's, but of course my grandmother, um, I think there's an untold story there that audiences so deserve to have a better snapshot of. Um, and what my dad has always told me um, about his father is that people would be surprised at the kind of dad that he was, the kind of dad that Marcus Garvey was. Because remember, um, if we're looking at the timeline, my father, Julius, was born in 1933. So when we're looking at this timeline in terms of the deportation, obviously my father was born after that. And so this notion of Uncle Junior, who was two years older than my father, so 1931 and 1933, um, this is the family man where Garvey takes a different role. And something that my dad tells me also is that people would be surprised at how spiritual Marcus Garvey um, was. And that's why in the commentary in the chat, I said Africa as a state of mind. It was never, or at least my understanding from my dad, from his father, um, it was that Africa was a state of being. When we speak about black excellence, when we speak about black beauty, when we speak about all things that are powerful, that are black, it wasn't about a landmass per se, it was a symbol of the landmass. It's a symbol of the flag, but it's a state of mind. And I think my grandfather so understood the power of the mind to really emphasize freedom and what does freedom mean. And so um, I wouldn't be so fixated on 
the sort of physicality. Did he make it to Africa? He didn't make it to Africa. He had an Africa state of mind, which transcended any journey or any, you know, um, geography, so to speak. He understood the power and the beauty of blackness. Um, and to be able to step into black power, black beauty, black excellence, um, I'm really proud. So yeah, I got, I got a great granddad, great grandma, great daddy. <laughs>